All right, hit the button. It means the video is commencing. Yay! All right, anyway. Uh, eyeballs leaking. Um, anyway, uh, Fred. Yeah, why, there's no one else to talk to. It's always Fred, 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 Fred. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, I wish there was some other person with a brain who made videos. Well, anyway, um, uh, anyway. So anyway, yep, brain, brain, brain. I'm going to talk about the brain. Uh, feelings and thinking. These distinctions, I've talked about it before. Uh, I think the brain is easiestly understood as just being a big tangle of reflexes. Just a bunch of reflexes, all tangled up. And, uh, yeah, that's all. Really simple things, but a whole bunch of them. Um, every word, everything, is just a, a few steps away from another one. Um, it's just a bunch of knee jerks. And you put them together, and they can be kind of elegant. But it's sort of like... Um, the vision we have of like a robot. Okay, a robot's very eh, 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 left, right, all the way. No, it just doesn't do the little incremental stuff very well. And I think our brain uses feelings uh, to uh, create the little subtle movements in between, the gradations. So the basic root is uh, good, bad, you know, pain, pleasure, at the very core. And I might even argue, uh, as I have, that pain is the only thing it really uses. It, it's, it's the release of a negative that is our sensation of positive. When we get rid of a tension, uh, we have the sensation of uh, freedom, release, uh, pleasure. And uh, so that dealt pleasure is basically the uh, release of a deprivation, freedom from a, an enslavement, uh, removal of the shackles, so to speak, as the metaphor. So there's only this one mechanism of, of unpleasantness that the brain is using, that is the core of all of it. And, uh, yeah, let's see what the origin is. is we need a, a motivator. We needed something to make the machine work, to go, to do. And uh, the robot thing just doesn't work too well. I mean, that's what basically, you know, you can see it sort of in lizards and some animals. They're either on or off. It's like there's no very little subtlety to their behavior. Uh, and so we are doing that in between things. So we're just pushing the on switch a little bit in one direction or a little bit in the other direction. Uh, and we're doing this very subtle, the ballet. We've turned this robot into a, a mental ballerina where it's using this negative sensation and using just little jabs of it, little pieces of it, little, little nuances of it uh, to create these different kinds of emotions and feelings that motivate us. So anyway, getting back to the the line we can draw, or the distinction we can make between behaviors motivated by ideas and concepts and behaviors motivated by cruder emotions and subjective uh, deprivation, the root of it. The core lizard versus ape crap again, all of that. Uh, now, I think it's not being disputed that the brain uses emotions, like intelligence uses emotions. And, uh, but it's like if you're, if you're raised and you, you have a, an ambition to please, you know, that's sort of something that's common to human beings is this need to be accepted. And part of acceptance is learning discipline. You know, don't urinate on the floor, <laughs> um, you know. Don't let your emotions own you. We have to learn that very early. You can't have what you want when you want it. Your tantrums and all the rest of it are not a proper way to communicate. Um, you know, so we acquire a sense of satisfaction, our self-satisfaction, uh, uh, in, in satisfying 
uh, that um, obligation to be civilized. I don't know, that's not the best way to put it, but anyway. Um, yeah, so we're getting pleasure out of it. We've turned it into a subjective need uh, to basically follow the rules or obey orders or, you know, be a good citizen. And uh, so we're deriving self-interested ego points um, by meeting the objective, the standard that we're, uh, we've decided, we've intellectually defined as the ambition, or we've emotionally even defined as, I want to please others. Um, so it can be, the ambition can be on many levels, um, but the point is, is once it's a mandate, once it's, uh, once it's been converted in your brain into a reflex that says, meet this standard, uh, yeah, then you'll be dissatisfied, you'll be uncomfortable if you do anything short of that. So now you become capable of doing merely out of principle, merely out of obligation, merely out of uh, a perceived requirement or, or that it will make you a good person by your definition, uh, whatever that might be. And uh, so yeah, there's a distance there between the emotion and its origin, which is this more complex uh, pile of uh, concept reflexes, principles, uh, that are kind of dictating the show because they are um, right at your core, always, always running in the background. They're always analyzing you and your environment and recognizing and, and, and reflexively reacting to any circumstance that um, puts you in ethical or moral jeopardy that might make you a bad person. So, I mean, temptation can be put in front of you and you can um, automatically, that little software program will run that says, you know, what would daddy say? <laughs> you know, what, you know, whatever the morality is, you know, you're going to be, you're going to ruin the productivity of your life by taking advantage of this circumstance. You're going to be selfish and an asshole. That little program will run. That little reflex will run. Uh, as soon as it's, as soon as there's even uh, any recognition of a circumstance where uh, there's a moral or ethical issue. And so, you know, the obvious one would pop up is, okay, naked, retarded girl right in front of me saying, I want something. <laughs> and you decide what she wants. Um, you know, it's just so right away, but the brain knows, it triggers the reflex, the thought psychology goes into place, and the uh, dilemma questions run through your head and are balanced against the self-interest I want um, and that's the way the, the equation is dealt with but it's all just reflexes and what reflexes uh, end up being dominant in how the game is played the pluses and the minuses are balanced inside the brain and it makes a decision based on the strength the emotional strength of those principles and the emotional strength uh, is sort of dictated in that very subtle way where there's a, an emotional attachment to certain ideals uh, a certain word and you'll start thinking of Iwo Jima and John Wayne and <laughs> you know being a hero and doing the right thing and, uh, so depending on how those reflexes cascade uh, will dictate, uh, you know, how you will uh, react to the circumstance. Um, yeah. So, I mean, it's all, it's all about how that argument's presented inside your head. I mean, I would imagine you could have two different movies and you could, you know, one movie would maximize the 
obligation argument, uh, you know, live a good life argument. Another movie would maximize the, oh, it really doesn't matter. Uh, you might as well take because it's, it's all doom anyway. Uh, argument. And you can imagine somebody walking out of a theater and being more likely to commit a certain crime based on which movie they had watched. Because, you know, one would have re-emphasized uh, an argument of the dignity of satisfying your obligations, uh, you know, would have a sense of pride, a self of, sense of self-accomplishment, uh, would have emphasized those ego gratifications where the other argument would have, you know, obscured that and defeated it with some other rationale uh, you know, rationalization, um, you know, that, you know, made the clear argument that, you know, all that is futile, uh, you know, everything is so broken, you can't break it anymore by any act you commit, that kind of argument. So anyway, but yeah, it's all, it's just all reflexes. I mean, every word is a reflex, every vision your brain is searching it, the, not, not directly, not intentionally, but just the way that it's um, arranged, that it will identify subconsciously things in this environment, what I'm hearing, what I'm seeing, that will trigger connective memories, and those memories will be connected to uh, principles and ideals and uh, you know, moments in life where there was a lesson learned and a proclamation was made never again it's like the drunk who often doesn't do it but you know they'll say never again now if 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 the right circumstance happens that never again principle might pop into their head at the right moment and they'll say oh yeah i really don't want that hangover and this bitch ain't worth the trouble so fuck it, <laughs> you know, uh, orange juice, uh, yeah, you know, they'll, they'll just make a different life choice, um, you know, because of that connection to merely saying the words to themselves, never again. So, I mean, I could, uh, you know, we motivate ourselves by just re-emphasizing our principles or our conceptions that we, our brain sees some indication of value in based on this hierarchy of uh, you know what we're attempting to be and how strongly we're obligated so I mean I, I have a, a high sense of obligation uh, you know I'm I'm easily uh, disappointed in myself um, you know so uh, you know I have a standard and it's a high standard uh, and so that's, uh, that's always in the background. That's the context of how I live. And it will, it'll, it can completely change, uh, a circumstance that might give somebody else great ego pleasure and say, ah, oh, I accomplished something where I would be, oh, it's way too little, way too late. Uh, <laughs> you know, or some kind of rationalization like that. So anyway, sorry, this kind of went on a bit. Anyway, until next time, and such, and so forth. Years. That's a big one. He's got a bad leg, though. Probably some hunter shot her in the butt. Fuckers. Oh, anyway. She's... I analyze that psychology. <sighs> Stupid humans. Anyway, till next time. And such. And so forth. And whatnot. <sighs>